The vote um, will be taken over the next few weeks. Uh, members have to have plenty of opportunity to um, receive the documentation and to read the documentation. So you've got, you're fully informed when making a decision. Um, now, if it, when it goes to a vote, and if the vote is rejected, then what will happen is that uh, we will be forced into an arbitration then. By law, we would be going into an arbitration. Now, if we do go to an arbitration, that just means all of your conditions could potentially be arbitrated. Now, that could put some of the big ticket items at risk, and that's our major concern. We'll, we'll run a professional wage case, um, and we will use evidence from other states, and we'll collect our own evidence, and we will have lawyers representing us. And as I say, we will run that case. There'll be expert evidence given, uh, witnesses will be put in the witness box, cross-examined by your employers, um, barristers, and vice versa. They will be putting expert evidence up and witnesses into the witness box that we would cross-examine. But it's not just about the wages, it's about what AV and the government would be seeking to remove from you in regard to some of your major conditions. Because if they think there was any potential of getting professional rates of pay or even improved rates of pay, which we don't know that we'll get them, um, we don't know what the outcome can be. So we have no control of it, unfortunately. Uh, we may get better rates, we may get similar rates, we may get worse rates. The issue will be is what will AV go on the attack for? And we think that the major items that they'll be going on the attack for is certainly the rolled in rate. Their preference would be that you only get paid base rates and shift penalties as you work those shifts. If they can't win that, then their fallback position may be that the rolled in rate is only payable on weekly payment, weekly pay, weekly wages, and possibly superannuation and not payable on other entitlements. Certainly they would at a minimum attack all overtime, we think. Whereas at the moment, at least you've got control in this in principle agreement that you've only lost um, the rolled in rate payment for overtime on the voluntary overtime. All other overtime is still paid at rolled in rates. So our concern is that it's not a matter of not wanting to go into an arbitration. Uh, it's a matter of, it's the fear of the unknown, what we may lose. Uh, and we don't know whether we're going to get any big gains. So we just don't know. Um, you're leaving it to the umpire. And whereas at the moment, the in-principle agreement um, allows you to decide to retain all of your other conditions except for that overtime at double the base rates. Yes, that's a worry and that's a concern and it's disappointing that that's, that's have, have to be given up. But at the end of the day, at least you've got control of that. Uh, and when you go into the unknown, such as an arbitration, um, you know, people would be far more disappointed if we lost the rolling rate across the board or if we lost it on more items than just this particular overtime. The other issue that the service may target is um, public holidays. And what I mean by that, um, anyone that's on 10 weeks leave per annum has their um, public holidays accrued towards their annual leave. The service may argue in arbitration that they only want to pay public holidays, pay the penalty for public holidays. So that could mean that people have their holidays reduced from 10 weeks per year down to seven weeks. The other thing that we lose is what we've gained out of this in-principle agreement. You know, the, the large pay increases in the first year, the 10-hour rest break, the other provisions that have been improved, we may not retain those in an arbitration and they could be put at risk. And the one, one thing that would be guaranteed that we wouldn't keep is the salary sacrifice into defined benefits because it's, it's a condition by government that that has to be part of an enterprise agreement, not as an outcome of a workplace determination or an arbitration. So they're things that we know of that would be put at, you know, put at risk, uh, whereas at the moment we have control of those. And yes, from our point of view, the union would recommend to its members to accept the agreement. Um, people will say, why? Uh, well, as I've said before, trying to explain it previously, is at least we have control of what's in the agreement. Um, what's going to happen in regard to professional rates of pay if you do accept the agreement? Well, it just means we have to prepare ourselves for the next round of bargaining, uh, and we may be in a better position next time because of what's happened in South Australia and what may happen in other states. There may be further evidence that may assist us. There could be some, uh, there, there will be some arbitrated decisions that may assist us moving forward. And yes, we come back in two and a half years and start renegotiating. Um, that's just one of the unfortunate things. We're disappointed that we couldn't get you professional rates. It wasn't through lack of trying, um, but it doesn't mean to say it is off the agenda. Uh, and we will continue to try and improve your wages and conditions moving forward as best we possibly can.
if arbitration does occur, um, it is possible it, could, it will take probably six to nine months before it's completed. So that means you wouldn't have a wage increase until that's finalised and it would be payable from that date. Um, pay rises are not generally not backdated in arbitrations. Uh, the last time round for people that were in the industry uh, through the MX, as you'd be aware, there was a higher increase in the first year to make up for some of the, the loss of back pay. Um, but again, those rates of pay didn't apply until the actual date of the uh, original decision for the MX. So it would mean a further delay on wage increases for you. Uh, and look, if we do go to an arbitration, as I say, we'll give it our best shot, but I can't guarantee an outcome for you. Yeah, pay rises have already kicked in as of the 11th of August, or the first full pay period from the 11th of August, because the government's committed to pay the wages back to that day. I know it's not a long time, but at least you, know, you have a wage increase already in your grasp if you vote in favour of this agreement. Um, so you have that increase in, in your, your monetary value, your weekly wages. Uh, if we go to arbitration, then obviously you'll just have to wait a bit longer for any increases. Just to recap the voting process, uh, as I said, you'll have all of the documentation this week, the draft, uh, final draft uh, in principle enterprise agreement. Uh, hopefully you'll read that. You have to have a minimum of seven days to review that document. Um, postal ballot papers probably will be posted out to your home address. That'll be done by AV and it goes to all employees that are eligible to be covered by this enterprise agreement, not just union members. Uh, so you'll get a ballot paper within the next couple of weeks. There'll be a closing date probably in about three weeks' time, uh, which will make it probably early, uh, early October. And it'll be a simple yes-no vote to the enterprise agreement. You'll either vote yes or no, depending on what you believe is your position on it. Uh, you post that back. Um, the union will be involved in the scrutineering of those votes to see whether it either gets over the line or it doesn't. And you'll be informed as soon as possible once that vote is taken of whether it's been accepted by, the, by uh, everyone that's voted or whether it's been rejected um, by the voters. And uh, as I've said before, if it's rejected, then we'll be preparing for an arbitrated case. In summary, um, as I've previously stated, um, we know that some members are not happy with this agreement. I totally accept that. But we believe from the union this is the best possible negotiated outcome that we could achieve in particular against that backdrop of the uh, midnight time frame on the 11th of August. You know, again, by law, um, we were bound to reach agreement by that time. If we couldn't reach an agreement, then we would have been into arbitration. And I would think many of the membership uh, would have been concerned that the union just took it straight to arbitration by not reaching an agreement without giving them an opportunity to consider an in-principle agreement, in particular if the outcome of an arbitration was that you did lose some major conditions. Um, we can't, if you do knock back this agreement, we can't just go back and renegotiate. There's no room for that anymore because by law we're bound just to go into an arbitration. So there's no room to say, oh, well, why don't they just give us a little bit more or do this or do that. Um, there is no room for that. To sum up, the, the, when considering voting, um, I just want you to consider um, the benefits of the agreement. Um, significant wage increases in the first year. Yes, only 2.5 in the second and 2.5 in the third, but significant in the first year. Improved meal break provisions. Um, the 10 hour rest break provision, which was crucial to the campaign. Uh, improvements for clerical and admin staff. Uh, improvements in some of the relievers allowances, such as the relievers meal allowances. Some improvements in the on-call allowances, and yes, um, it means that the um, the branches can on-call branches can have some greater flexibility in the way that on-call is worked, and that can only be done by agreement with the members at that branch, with the employees at that branch. Uh, so there's some of the improvements that you need to consider uh, when voting on this agreement. If any member prior to voting doesn't believe they've received enough information and explanation regarding the in-principle agreement or the potentials in regard to if the agreement is voted down, um, please don't hesitate to give us a call at the union office or on our mobiles. Um, we're more than happy to conduct more members' meetings if we need to, more than happy to discuss it with individual employees, either via email, contact us by phone or, if need be, through members' meetings. Thank you.